Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dr. Heather Denniston, and this is the Junk You Should Know show, which airs every Friday at noon PST on the Well Fit and Fed Facebook page. We bring you absolutely practical information about wellness content that typically is a little hard to digest. Well, we break it down for you so that you can chew it and absorb it and use it in your life. And today is no exception. Today, I have with me Jay Grunke. Do I roll my R? Like, oh, I like it. It's sort of so <laughs> German. We practiced a little before the show. I'll tell you that much. Uh, she was very kind in helping me through that last name because it's not the easiest. No. But uh, it's it's a beautiful last name nonetheless. Thank you. So thank you for coming and wait to hear what we have in store with this wonderful woman. Um, welcome, first of all. Thank you very much. I'm really excited to be here. I met Jay at a conference in San Diego and knew immediately, one of the things I do when I go to conferences is I go through all the people attending and I'm like, who do I wanna meet? And Jay was the top of my list. And she has a company called the Balanced Runner, is it Method? System. Balanced Runner System. And what is unique and interesting about this is Jay is not the person you go to to learn uh, a training program for a 5K, okay? Jay has a much different approach to getting you comfortable in your body, um, understanding form and function as a runner and as a human, and her system is incredible. I'm gonna let her tell you about it, but you have an interesting background. So let's start with your background and what brought you into movement as a chosen line of work. Sure, so um, yeah, into movement. I mean, I've been in movement my whole adult life. And, you know, it started really with realizing as literary studies major in college that I wanted to be a professional dancer. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't dancing yet. And, you know, like 18, 19 years old is kind of like to start if you're a woman. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just playing catch up to my peers who were in conservatories. And um, and I did everything I could find. I did Alexander and Klein Technique and gyrotonics and Pilates. And, you know, it was a huge learning huge learning experience for me and, and taught me way more than just dance technique. So, so can I just interrupt you? Cause I don't want to gloss over the fact you had never danced before and you got right. to college and decided I'm going to dance and you became a professional dancer. Is that not right? That's right. I mean, I did do a few months of ballet in fourth grade. So okay. well, yeah, that I mean, doesn't if we're really, really, <laughs> really precise about this. Yeah. So um, yep. That's how it went. Um, you know, except that it was, it, it, it sounds so neat and tidy like that, but it was super stressful at the time. I'm I, sure it was. I mean, and then I think looking for the dance classes where I was the worst one so that I could learn the maximum. Yes. And, uh, and, uh, and I got there and, you know, and with the benefit of like, I hadn't, just people kept telling me I hadn't had all the personality trained out of me <laughs> they, they do at Juilliard and whatever. So, um, anyway, it, yes, yeah. it all worked out. It's yeah, for sure. And then, be able to look back and say, oh, that worked out. And I think it was sort of an injury that ended up bringing you to something called Feldenkrais, which That's we right. are going to define. So tell me a little bit about that. So uh, in my mid 20s, I developed really bad Achilles tendonitis. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of that had to do with just the ways that I've been muscling through, mm -hmm. you know, my technique, because I was just trying to make it work, you know, with so little background. And, um, some elements also, I think I was a vegetarian at that point. And, um, you know, and I see in my practice now, you know, I just see, I see different, I see bigger injury rates and I see slower recoveries. I do too. So, yeah. I mean, it's not so popular to be saying that, but, no, but it, it is what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So I, it was like, I couldn't walk without pain, really bad Achilles mm -hmm. tendonitis, both feet. You know, doctor was telling me, you know, like like in the movies, oh, you'll probably never dance again. Um, and then someone recommended I go to a Feldenkrais practitioner and I was walking without pain in about six weeks. Oh, wow. And um, when I went back to dancing uh, about six months later, which even could have been sooner, but I had made work commitments because I didn't know. Um, when I went back to dancing, I was a much better dancer than I'd ever been before. Wow. And dancing finally felt the way that I knew that it was supposed to feel, you know, like I could think a thing and my body, you know, and I was just there, I was doing, wow. it, you know, and I had all of the organic movements, how, just how to balance on one leg, how to extend myself, mm -hmm. how to hold myself. And so 
I could put techn ballet technique on top of that, you know, modern dance technique on top of that, and it just worked. Oh. And people enjoyed watching it, and I enjoyed doing it, and then I had a career. That's fantastic. And yeah. so you mentioned this Feldenkrais, and I will say most people I run into do not know what that is. And so right. can you define it and explain how that has now become a part of your life? Yeah. So just briefly, uh, the Feldenkrais method of movement education is, uh, is not exercise. It's not a therapy. It's just a system for helping you improve what you know about how to coordinate your whole self in space and time fulfill your intentions. So people sometimes call it neuromuscular education or motor learning. It's now considered to be a neuroplastic therapy that makes changes in the brain. Mm. So just to get really jargony about it. Yeah. But, you know, on a on a on a practical level, what this means is that a Feldenkrais practitioner helps you be able to feel how to coordinate yourself better. And so people like I, I know practitioners who work with infants who are born with cerebral palsy from mm -hmm. like their day of birth. Yeah. And um, I know practitioners who work with people with, you know, multiple sclerosis and Parkinson's disease mm -hmm. and traumatic brain injury. You know, you can, um, I know practitioners who work with animals. So the applications are vast. And so that means, and then they're, you know, athletes, I've, Moshe Feldenkrais gave lessons to Dr. J and Yo-Yo Ma's done Feldenkrais <laughs> lessons, artists, um, anyone who wants to be perform their best. Yeah. You know, and you know, jumping ahead to running, you know, which is the field that I'm working in now, the thing that's always been fascinating to me is um, that at the people at the very top have heard of it. Uh, um, yeah. I introduced myself to Terrence Mahan, who's one of the top distance coaches in the United States. You know, I I said, hi, I'm Jay Grunke. I'm a Feldenkrais practitioner. I'd love to be a resource for you. And I was expecting to have to explain it and persuade him why I would be a resource. But instead he said, oh, I love Feldenkrais. It's oh. a cool way to get the pelvis moving. Oh my and gosh. I just almost fainted dead away. Oh. I couldn't have imagined a more unlikely sentence. You know? Yeah, no kidding. But that's that's the difference between the people who are at the very top and yeah. even people just below them is that not only are they willing to go outside the box, but they're actively doing it, looking for the things that are gonna give them, the legal things that are gonna give them an edge. So. Yes, for sure. And I I only just, as a, I've been a chiropractor for 22 years and I've never, I've heard of it, but I had never explored it until recently. And it actually happened parallel path to me meeting you and it ends up, you knew who I had seen in Scottsdale. Right. right. And um, it's incredibly powerful work, very interesting and, um, moving in so many ways uh, to, to, to use the term physically and mentally and emotionally. Yeah. Um, and so you took this Feldenkrais and then tell me why running, you were a dancer. So. Exactly, so, um, so I ended up working with a choreographer who decided to make uh, some work outdoors, site specific work in big open park spaces, which meant there were no wings to exit off into and <laughs> running around and running and running and running. And it was a really intense aerobic effort. And mm -hmm. that's not a, a common demand for a dancer. You know, usually it's more anaerobic. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just dying. And I thought I have to, it's just a very bad feeling to be running out of gas in front of an audience, you know? Yeah. And, and so I thought I better train for this. I better start running and develop better aerobic capacity. And um, then, so I started trying to go out for a run a couple of days a week and it felt awful. Oh. And I was like, why can't I do this fundamental human gait? Mm -hmm. I can do, you know, I got myself, you know, from a late start to be able to do all of these technical things that normal people can't do, you know, my legs up really high and turning, yeah. you know, <laughs> dancer stuff. So why couldn't I run? It just seemed crazy. And so, um, and, and like when I get that, pissed off about something, <laughs> I can't let it go. So I started trying to figure out, well, what is the problem? What's the difference between me and someone who can run comfortably and smoothly and gazelle-like and seems yeah. like they feel good, like they're enjoying it? And I read the books that were out there at that time, which wasn't so much. This was like 97, 98, 2000, 90, uh, yeah, well, 98, 99. Anyway, um, uh, around then. 
And uh, it was before, it was in the days where on the whole runners were still discouraged from working on their form. And what I was trying to learn was running form. And I just approached it with the same mind that I had approached learning how to dance. It's like, okay, there's a technique here. I need to learn what it is. I need to perfect it. I'll work on it every day, just like I did with dancing and um, I'll figure it out and it'll get to feel good. And I, that was a really foreign idea in the running world, but I didn't mm -hmm. know that. But there wasn't a lot of information. Um, but I just, I was already trained to become a Feldenkrais practitioner because I wanted to help other people the way the Feldenkrais practitioner had helped me. Yeah. And so I used my professional Feldenkrais training as my laboratory to try out the ideas that I was reading about and to do Feldenkrais lessons and see how they affected my running. Yeah. And uh, I had some, I had, you know, every once in a while I would have this massive breakthrough. I would do a lesson and afterwards it would be like, whoa, this is so different and it feels good. Ah. And after a few of those, you know, which that it, over the course of a year, a year and a half, I got to a place where running felt really nice. And in fact, it felt better and like it um like i was working with my body more so than when i was dancing ah which stands to reason because it's a fundamental human gait right we walk yes. we run whereas we don't arabesque pirouette grand jeté like yeah. the, 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 that vocabulary you know western concert dance vocabulary was developed because of how it looked to an observer uh, so we figured out a way to make it work in our bodies and it feels good in a particular way, but in a complete, it, it, but it's not, it's not, it's not fundamental the way running is. Yeah. But we yeah. don't evolve for it the way we evolve for running. Now you mentioned, um, let's just stop there for a sec. You said Feldenkrais lesson. That, that was odd to me at first when okay. my Feldenkrais, because I'm like, I'm having a session with you. I don't get what the whole right, right. piece is. So explain that because people should understand that Feldenkrais is an educational platform, right? not a treatment so, platform. Exactly. So when you go to a Feldenkrais practitioner or you um, get Feldenkrais learning materials, so you know you can do a one-on-one -on -one or a group class or you can get recordings online or books that you read lessons from, um, what you are doing, you're there to learn something. There's a, the, the, the gap between what you're able to do now and what you'd like to be able to do that you're trying to close involves learning something that you didn't know about how to coordinate yourself. And so, yeah, that's why we call it a lesson. I mean, occasionally I'll call it a session because that's sort of a generic, but yeah. I would never call it a, a therapy, <laughs> you know, right. like, because I'm not doing anything to anybody. I'm, I'm doing what a teacher does. I'm, assessing what needs to be learned and then I'm setting up a learning experience so that you can arrive at the discovery yeah. self of what it is that you needed to know. And when you learn like that, what you learn becomes yours, it becomes a fundamental part of you and no one can ever take it away from you. So I love that. I love that. So let's let's move into the running thing because I know there's a lot. First of all, as a chiropractor, I spent many years telling people not to run, and the reason was was because of bad patterning, having been on concrete their whole life with shoes that didn't pattern their bodies very well, weak core, no form whatsoever. And so, had I known about you, that would have been easy. I'd be like, "Yeah, you can run, but you got to go through her first. Yeah. Um, and so, talk to me a little bit about running form and and what people do with you when they connect with you, and maybe some practical tools that you can give us today for running form. Sure. Um, first, ignore everything that you ever hear about running form because a lot of it, like, because a lot of it is just something somebody's coach once said that kind of sounds like it makes sense. So it gets passed down uh -huh. you know, and it has no basis in how the human body works. Mm. So I used to call that folk wisdom, but I realized that really does a disservice to folk wisdom because folk wisdom encapsulates what has worked. Yeah. <laughs> right. This is like the opposite. And in fact, there's a reason why people often teach the dicey stuff rather than, because when, when you're really skilled at something, it just happens and you don't even know how it happens. So you don't know how to teach it. Yeah. Um, and the things that you're aware of, like having to like try or struggle around with your own running, those are the things that you feel like, oh yeah, that's, I work really hard at that. So that's what I'll teach my runners. Mm -hmm. It's actually the dicey stuff that like, isn't quite right. 
And so some of that gets what, that's what gets relayed. Mm -hmm. So that's where I have a huge advantage coming to this with the background of my Feldenkrais training um, and knowing how gait really works, you know, and how running is connected to all the other things that a human being does, how it works in our brain, our nervous system, our skeleton, our tissues. Yeah. So that's a generic. Um, the first thing that you need to know is that um, a better running form is more coordinated mm -hmm. running form, and therefore feels easier. Mm. So people approach this idea of, you know, how to correct running form or technique. You know, if I'm moving my body right, it should take a lot of discipline. It probably takes a lot of strength. It's probably hard. But in fact, that couldn't possibly be the case because you're using your body the way it really works. And yeah. that's the easiest way to use your body. The way it was designed. Yeah, exactly. So, um, uh, so if you um, make a change and it makes it feel easier to hold a certain pace or go mm -hmm. a certain different distance, or if you have a heart rate monitor, if you know if your heart rate's lower at a given pace, then that's a clear and solid sign that that's, a, that's an improvement. Ah. So this is like for, I mean, it's sort of in a way it feels obvious, but um, it's like a, an earth shattering idea to lots of lifelong runners is like, a, a, and a form improvement should feel easier immediately, ah, like in the instant, not like right. you're used to it. So everyone should know that to begin with. That's excellent. Um, uh, second thing is that um, uh, movement comes before strength and produces strength. So you, there's no kind of strength that you need to have to start running. Like you should get into it gradually with a walk run program but that you don't have to pre-strengthen like your running muscles. Ah. And if um, muscles that you are ought to be using for running don't get strong from running, it's because you don't know how to use them. And so then you need a learning process. Strengthening those muscles just means you're carrying more muscle with you into your running, but doesn't change, doesn't help you know how to use them when you're running. A really, really great point. I wanna stop on that. What you're saying is, uh, how we use the muscle is almost more important than the strength of the muscle itself. So yes. the, the neural integration with surrounding muscles and with activating and deactivating is priority number one. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Once you know how to, yeah. Or like in, in, as a Feldenkrais practitioner, I would just say knowing how to coordinate yourself. Yeah. And then everything that you, all the muscles that you need for running get stronger, you know, all together from running. Yeah. And yeah. that includes even core strengthening. I mean, running is fundamentally a core strengthening activity unto itself. Yeah. So, you know, while I'm I'm a big believer in cross training because as to be a fit and healthy human being capable yes. of doing all the things a human needs to do, you need to be able to do more than just run. So, you know, yeah. on the human level, you need to be able to do, you should lift some weights, you know? Right. You should, you know, learn to do different kinds of activities and movements with your body than running. Um, yeah. so, I think that's really so what you're saying though, is if I'm hearing what you're saying mm -hmm. is you don't spe specifically subscribe to cross training as a method to uh, further your running um, acumen, you say, well, do it because you're a human and you need to push, pull, squat and twist. Um, but not because it's going to necessarily like make you a better runner. Running is going to make you a better runner. Right. Um, yes. Yes. And now with two caveats. Okay. So, um, you know, at a certain level, you know, like either you have a big goal mm. or, you know, you're a world-class runner and you need to compete, you know, then strength and conditioning work is, is going to be a part of your training. Okay. So, but for the average person who wants to run well and be fit and enjoy it and have it be just part of the activities that you do, including, you know, an annual marathon or whatever, yeah, you don't need to strength train to run in order to be a healthy runner. Right. Okay. Yeah. That, I mean, that makes sense. Um, I also am a big believer in variety just in terms of personal yeah. health and and building a, a cushion. So um, anytime you build your movement skill overall, you make yourself yeah. more versatile and resilient. And that's, again, important that's as, as a value unto itself. 
Very good. Did we get to a third? I, I, I got all buried in what we were talking about. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> super. <laughs> super. Um, yeah. So anyway, I mean, I think I would say uh, uh, other things that runners should know, either, you know, people are running now have been trying to, run, you know, run their best, qualify for Boston. Yeah. You know, set a PR um, or people who want to get into running. You know, there's there's a lot of fear of pounding, ah. but see, but um, when you run well, that's it's not pounding, it's loading. Running is a spring-driven activity. Yeah. And, um, so you do experience compression forces of up to you know 2.5 or well, I don't know up to what, but on average 2.5, 2.7 times your body weight at a point in your gait cycle. Actually, not when you're landing, but when you're on your leg. Yeah, and that's just like let me see if I have, that's that's just this. Whoops, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's so if it only springs, like otherwise, it doesn't go anywhere, you know, yeah. don't stress it. But if I compress it, then it can really spring, yeah. Um, and that's running, yeah. And so, you need to learn how to align and coordinate yourself, um, so that that is so that you are maximizing, you're benefiting. From, I mean, people can't really run on the moon because they don't load enough. Yeah, that's you need to um, learn how to do that well. well it's designed to. It's not meant yeah. to be damaging. And, and from a chiropractic standpoint, if you're not loading well because you're not running with great form, then that's when we start to have problems. And exactly. so, um, yeah, I like that. That's a focal point for what you're working on and, and what you teach. So I think that's great. Good. Anything that you do to try and protect yourself from pounding just makes it worse. So like really squishy shoes and like orthotics and trying to stick to soft surfaces, though your shoe should have varying terrain. Yeah. But um, your body handles, handles that compression and um, makes the most of it best when you have the least cushioning underfoot. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've never seen worse injuries than like in the few people I've run across who are running in very cushioned motion control shoes with two pairs of our orthotics inside <laughs> Yeah, on grass. There's a point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's no chance. There's no chance of staying healthy like that. So. What? Oh, for sure. Yeah. What are your recommendations if someone feels like, Oh, I can't run because I, I have never and now I'm too old. And and so do you have any sort of encouragement for folks that are out there listening going, well, this is all great for the 25 year old who's right. you know, starting a running program. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Sure. Well, you know, I think um, I mean, I don't think anyone's too old. Like mm -hmm. that category like means nothing. Right. Um, uh, you know, you should have a basic kind of well rounded fitness and mobility it doesn't have to be very high, you know, but you should yeah. be able to go out for an hour's walk, I would say, before you tackle that running goal. And then with a really, you know, gradual run walk program. Yeah. And Jeff Galloway is the name there, you know, just ah. do an internet search for that. Um, uh, he's got great run walk programs that are really gradual. You know, you don't have to That's be great. in a rush to suddenly be running 30 minutes without interruption. Some people actually who are very fit, and who run marathons a few times a year, even just only ever run walk. And often they finish faster than the folks who run continuously. So that's a viable. I mean, some people just love that and stick to it. Other people yeah. get to a continuous running. Um, but cool. take your time with it and you can totally do it. My mother, um, uh, who was doing like she, gardening and just being a physically active, energetic kind of person and taking um, a, a, a aqua fitness classes a couple of times a week, which I really poo-pooed as possibly being any kind of a workout, I admit. You know, she just up and did a turkey trot with the whole family at the age of 71. Oh, wow. And um, she, she just, what was it? It was like 3K. And she just ran start to finish, finished a big wow. smile on her face at the finish line, you know, yeah. she and my son together. It was really, I was blown away. So it can be done. Yeah, it can be done. I mean, we don't recommend if you're 75 to go out and run 3K, but, uh, <laughs> but it's, but 
Well, no, it depends on what you're starting from. Because I would also say, I mean, some my clients really tend to be in their 40s and beyond, and I have uh, many clients in their 70s. Now, on 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 average, those are people who've been running for several decades. Oh, they're yeah. Competing at the master's level, you know. Yeah. I've got a couple in their 80s. So that is totally, I and mean, you can be a really serious athlete at that age. That's no problem. Oh, for sure. I don't doubt that. I don't want people going from zero to 3K. Sorry, with uh, no intervening. Yeah. I'm, so, so I'm not recommending, I've recommended a wind walk program. Yes. And I for think that's great. People have a sense of the of possibility. Yeah. That's so huge. And Jay, that's a lot of what we teach here with Well Fit and Fed is, is the idea of don't put boundaries around you that aren't there. Don't put speed yeah. bumps in place that don't exist. Yeah. Um, you know, you're such a great example of the people that you work with, you know, in their 70s and their 80s um, who are still running really competitively. And I think that's amazing. So maybe we could slip into that. You got any success stories you want to share with us? Sure. Well, you know, they're, they're a, a range, you know, and, and my, my practice has been, you know, with runners from beginner to Olympian and I love them all equally, you know, and I get so <laughs> excited for everybody's success, you know, at any level. So, you know, at the, at the higher level, um, uh, three-time Olympian Jen Rines, oh. uh, whose husband and coach was Terrence Mahan and, um, uh, who stunned me by knowing about Feldenkrais. <laughs> um, uh, she had um, gotten uh, injured. She tore her plantar fascia a, mm -hmm. in Beijing at the Beijing Olympics. That was her third Olympics. And she just wasn't recovering. Mm -hmm. And um, she had to bail on her track season the next year and was thinking that might be the end of the road for her. But we started working together just via Skype and um, got her back to running comfortably and six, seven months later, she won the US road racing championship and just went on to continue just totally kicking butt as a master's runner. That's so, right. and she's still running and coaching now. So um, yeah, and so then that's part of what I do is like recovery when like the medical stuff is somehow not solving the problem mm -hmm. um, because the issue is how you're moving. Yeah. So um, similarly, with Jordan Hase, who's a, a, an elite American marathoner, um, uh, uh, she she had a great marathon debut in Boston. I lost track of the, a few years ago, <laughs> um, and um, then oftentimes people's debut marathon is their fastest. Mm. That's kind of what people were thinking might happen. But she trained for Chicago, which is in the fall of the same year. And uh, she got in touch with me just after Boston and we worked together. Um, and her Chicago marathon was faster than wow. Boston. And that's really unusual. So that wasn't just me. I mean, she was training, she had coaching, she was, yeah. I was part of a team, yeah. but, we, but we made really fairly dramatic changes to her form. Oh, that's and really just great. really trying to put her on the same playing field with the East African athletes. Mm -hmm. uh, on the whole, their form is excellent. Yeah, how cool. Well, and then, how, how do people work? You uh, you mentioned you work remotely. So how yeah. do people, if they're like, hey, I'd like to learn more about this, or I'd like to improve my running times, or I'd like to just feel better in my body. Um, two questions. One is, how do they reach you? And if someone is not a runner and maybe they just want to be power walking or they want to be doing, can they work with you as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you can reach my website is balancedrunner.com. Okay. And I have a range of online offerings. Um, so a great place to start is just with my free mind, your running challenge. Okay. Um, and so if you go to my website, you'll see it. And we'll put that, we'll put the yeah, all the links below. Great. So, uh, so that okay. is a freebie. Mind your running challenge. It's yeah. a one week challenge, which is a great place to start, really. And yeah. everybody is just doing a little one week taste test and see yeah. how that goes. That's awesome. And then you do one to one coach, mm -hmm. coaching. Mm -hmm. yep. I do one to one. And I and then I also have a, basically a course, which I call my online running camp that I've been offering for many years. Okay. So, uh, yeah, the, the one to one stuff, we do video analysis and uh, we've moved on from Skype. We do Zoom calls. Um, and so I create custom learning programs and then support people 
um, it's a it's a three month block of time. It's really intensive. Oh. Um, but it's really transformative. So people come to me for that again with situations like Jen's where they've got an injury or an injury cycle they can't break. And you know you don't have to be an elite athlete for that to be a huge issue for you. you yeah. Know? Um, so I, I mean, I see a lot of um, people are training for Ironmans, people are training for marathons, and you know they get to a certain point in the training cycle and they just break down every time and they don't make it to the starting line, wow. or they bubble through and they don't, you know, reach their, you know, they don't make their time goal or whatever. So, um, you know, that's where that kind of one-to-one -one work is really called for. Yeah. Um, otherwise, there's there's a my six-week. Um, online running camp, which is a comprehensive program that if you just, if you've got some injuries, if you, you know, like that, it's, it's not personal, but it yeah. covers all the bases. So is, that's, that's another great. good option. Well, if you get excited running and you want to absolutely do it right. Yeah, for easy. sure. Where are you based out of? I'm in uh, the Bay Area. So okay. I have an office in Mill Valley, California, oh, just nice. in San Francisco. Um, yeah. So I and so for anyone who's in the area, of course, there's nothing like one to one because then I can touch you for sure I can yeah. touch you while you run. So, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Well, listen, Jay, thank you so much for joining us. I'm super, super excited that we got such great content in only 30 minutes. We got all sorts of practical tool, mm -hmm. tools and I'll put all of your links below. And if you think of any additional links like the run to or the walk to run guy and that and you think of any additional ones, throw them in the links below Perfect. if I uh, don't manage to. But uh, I sure appreciate you being on and I know we'll be in touch. And uh, and thank you. Thank you so oh, much. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on. It's been oh, wonderful. you're welcome. Okay, everybody. Well, listen, for those of you who uh, are watching Friday at noon, I love that you guys come back every week to watch the show. For those of you catching us on YouTube, which is where the show lives forever, I love you just as much. And we will see you next week, Friday at noon PST. And thank you, Jay. Please stay on so I can give you a proper thank you. And to everybody else, have a great weekend. Goodbye. Bye.